Coming up today on Primetime Local News, what's planned for Canada Day 2022 in Lloydminster? And a local sporting goods store is reacting to the federal government's new gun control bill. Plus, Lloydminster youth prepare to clean graffiti this summer. Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. The federal government announced Bill C-21 last month, introducing what the Prime Minister called some of the strongest measures to keep guns out of Canadian communities. But a local sporting goods store is sounding off on the bill. Bill C-21 seeks to freeze the sale, purchase or transfer of handguns in Canada. Cal Wakeland from Wildside Outdoors in Lloydminster says if passed, the bill would have a negative impact on his business. My long guns have dropped in sales probably about 40% already. And that's only been two months. Uh, the guys are going underground. They're, they're just doing it right on the street now. Why register it? If I've got a 30 odd six I want to sell, I just put it out in, a, out in a gun world, you know, I want to sell one. Buddy comes up and says, here, I'll give you a thousand bucks cash. We don't have to register nothing. And nobody knows the difference. I know the difference because it's my business that's getting hurt. They come in to buy that 30 odd six from me and now I don't have that sale. Wakeland says he's seen a huge uptick in handgun sales since the legislation was announced. While the bill does include stronger penalties for offenses like gun smuggling, Wakeland says the bill goes after legal gun owners instead of criminal groups. When they introduced it, it was crazy. Within three or four hours, we were sold out of handguns. We probably had 35 handguns in there, and we were sold out. Uh, people are getting scared that this is going to happen and they want to make sure that they have their hands up. The bill has gone through second reading and will be reviewed by the Standing Committee on Public Safety and National Security. Over the past two years, Canada Day plans have had to be virtual due to COVID-19, but now for 2022, the main event is back in the border city and our Shelby Clark has the details on what's all planned for the big day. Joining us today for primetime local news is Cindy Rekmowicz with the city of Lloyd Minster. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today, Cindy. Thank you for having me. Excited to talk about our event. Yeah, I'm super excited as well to kind of get the help get the word out beforehand before it comes up here later on in the week. But, you know, Canada Day 2022 coming up on Friday. So what's the city's plan for this year's event? We're excited to be hosting uh, Canada Day at Bud Miller All Seasons Park again. So we, um, our main event runs from 1 to 6 p.m. It is at Bud Miller in behind the amphitheater. We are actually uh, changing the location of it this year and everything will be um, back behind the amphitheater, um, including the animal attraction zone, the main attraction, the bioclean adventure zone, the guardian fun zone, and we'll have food vendors back there as well. So it's gonna be happening and um, we, we just encourage everybody to, um, there's different ways that we can get back there. We do have a shuttle service that's running from the Service Sports Center to uh, Bud Miller from 11.30 to 7.30. Um, you can also, there will be limited parking in Bud Miller and at Lakeland College, and we will have a shuttle service um, getting people back, uh, people over getting people back to that amphitheater area. But the quickest way to get there would be if you live close, jump on your bike and we're going to have bike racks back there to lock up your bike and uh, there'll be less walking. So encourage people to bike and walk and get, get to the uh, park. Now I know for the past couple of years that we weren't able to have, you know, an event for Canada day, of course, due to the pandemic. So how does it feel to know that you're able to have this one coming up for 2022? Yes, it was. So we haven't had a Canada day in person since 2019. So it's coming on three years. So it'll be exciting to have people right in the park celebrating um, that we have entertainment on our main stage from 1 to 10.30 at night. So our opening ceremonies, we have an opening act and then opening ceremonies will be at 1.15. And then we have the Dirt Rich Band uh, closing out um, until the fireworks from 7.30 till 10. So it will be great. And I'm assuming for Canada Day, it'll kind of be like the same events that we've been having back here in the border city, you know, with the no regulations or such, right? Is there going to be any sort of protocols that people can expect or will it just be kind of back to normal, like you were saying? That is correct. Yeah, there is no current regulation. So 
We encourage anyone that does want to wear a mask that um, to feel comfortable in that situation are welcome to uh, wear a mask, but no other regulations will be in place. We'll have hand sanitizer available um, for, for people to use, but uh, yeah, we are back to a regular celebration, so that's exciting. Oh, well, that's great. I'm sure lots of people here are excited to be able to have this coming up here in the border city and have some positivity in the community. Has there been some strong support so far online and whatnot from uh, other organizations and sponsors as well? Absolutely. Our sponsors have come um, through as they always do. We have a presenting sponsor, a new presenting sponsor this year that's exciting, the cooperators. So um, Jason Arden and Associates and Anderson Insurance Group. Um, those two groups have come, or those two companies have come forward and they're the presenting sponsor. Then we have some zone sponsors, um, the BioClean Adventure Zone and the Guardian um, Fun Zone. And then the Canadian Tires come on board uh, as our volunteer sponsor. So we are appreciative of those big sponsors and there's many other sponsors as well. Well, it's really great to hear how strong that support is so far from sponsors and other organizations that want to help out. And is there anything else that's needed right now for a Canada Day event that other people can know about that they can help out with, you know, like volunteers and whatnot? Absolutely. We are um, short about 20 volunteers for our event. Um, so the, we have two shifts. We're looking for people to um, monitor bounce houses for us. So it's a pretty easy job. Um, we have two shifts from 12 till or 12:45 till three and three to six. And if you are interested in helping us out, we would really appreciate it. You can email events at lloydminster.ca and we will get you um, registered as a volunteer. And we would really appreciate a few more coming forward. So perfect. And is there anything else you want to add uh, more for people to know about when it comes up to this Canada Day event and what they can expect? Um, just, yeah, our main attractions are open from one to six. So that's the prime of our event. So um, one to six, and then the main stage, there'll be entertainment after that. And then our last and most exciting part is the fireworks will be happening at 11 p.m. Um, from Bud Miller. So um, it's a, a full day of events, but plan to come early and uh, use the shuttle, um, use different forms of transportation, carpool, uh, minimize the people that are driving in the park and uh, it will be a successful event. Oh, great. Well, thanks again so much for joining us today, Cindy. And I'm glad we were able to speak on this and help get the word out. I'm excited to see what's coming up here for uh, Canada Day here in the border city. Excellent. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you getting the word out for us. And now for a look at your evening weather forecast with Shelby Clark. Thank you so much, Mr. Jason Mackey. Yes, you know, Canada Day is coming up here, so it's going to be nice to be able to see what kind of weather we are expecting here in the border city now that it is uh, coming up now for this year. We're going to have a nice big event. But for today, right now, here in the border city, we are just seeing 20. We are seeing a nice warmer day, uh, seeing a mixture of some sun and clouds. We are seeing a nicer day than what we were seeing yesterday. Unfortunately, we will be seeing a much more gloomier day tomorrow, but don't worry, we will uh, warm it back up after Wednesday. And moving on to uh, temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan. On the Alberta side, we are seeing those double digits, seeing some nice warmer temperatures for most spots. Uh, we are seeing past that 20 mark for most spots. They're just seeing uh, 21 in most areas on the Alberta side. Uh, Vermilion is just reaching 20 as well as up in Bonneville and Lac La Biche, 19 up in St. Paul. And as we go a little bit lower at Provost, they are seeing slightly warmer there just at 22. So to now to our Saskatchewan side here, they are seeing those double digits as well, kind of matching with us on the Alberta side. Uh, even down in Macklin, they're seeing the warmest with that 23 mark. As we go a little bit higher up, they are seeing more 21s and 22s. Uh, Pierceland, St. Wahlberg, Maidstone and North Battleford are all matching with us in the border city, just reaching 20. For North Battleford from 20, they will be going down to low of 12. So we are going back to those double digits for our evening lows. We were kind of cooled down the night before, but now we are warming it back up for our evening low temperature. They will be seeing those showers, though, start off in their evening. That will continue into tomorrow. They will be joining us for that gloomy day, seeing 17. Cold Lake will be going out to low of 12 as well, seeing kind of the same conditions with that drizzle throughout the evening that will continue throughout the night into tomorrow. They will be seeing that start up in their morning with uh, 20 degrees, so they will still be seeing a nicer temperature, but they will be seeing a little mixture of some sun and cloud with that drizzle. 
And for us in the border city, we will be seeing that low of 12. We will be seeing that rainfall kind of start up later on in our evening. We are seeing a lot more sun peak behind those clouds right now, but we will be seeing that uh, precipitation kind of start up later on in our evening. And then we will be seeing uh, that drizzle tomorrow throughout the day. So seeing that little bit of rainfall and then we will be seeing 15. So we will be cooling down quite a bit, but we will be warming it right back up after. I will uh, talk about that a little bit later on in my next forecast. And now showing off one of your nice photo submissions. Thank you to everyone that submitted some great weather photos to our Facebook page already. We already got a lot of submissions. You can continue to do so. I will use them on my weather segments. This one's from Amy. Thank you for this beautiful shot there of the clouds. I saw quite a few of these clouds so far, so thank you. They're absolutely gorgeous with that pink and the orange back there. Just a nice colorful shot. And uh, thanks again for submitting, uh, submitting this to our Facebook page, but that's all I got for now. We'll have more coming up after the break. Welcome back. Lloydminster Youth will have the opportunity this summer to work on a mural as part of a youth graffiti cleanup project. The new mural will be located behind the giant tiger and painting will commence on Thursday. City Development Coordinator Amber Fast joined our Sarah Baker to talk a bit more about the project. Thank you so much for being here, Amber, to talk about the youth graffiti cleanup project. Thanks for having me. This year, the project usually is done around different locations in the community since this is an annual sort of project. So why did you choose the location this year? How did you do that? This year is going to be the back of Giant Tiger. Um, it's another mural downtown. So um, it has extensive graffiti on it. And that's one of the number one things we look for. It, and also um, it has a, it's very visual. It faces the movie theater parking lot and um, it's a very busy spot in downtown. This year, the mural, of course, I read a bit on it from what we got. It's going to have some mental health awareness depictions and poppies. How does it, it, how is it decided what the mural is going to depict? Every year is a little different. Uh, there's a few factors. I guess that it has to be, um, it has to be easy enough for the youth to do. Um, so sometimes there's um, meaning behind it and sometimes there's not. Sometimes it's just fun. Uh, this year, we do have some symbolism going on. So like you said, we have uh, some imagery from the mental health navigation tool. Uh, we have some poppies, some tiger lilies, some wild rose. So we also have some sweet grass. So just uh, representing a, a couple things, Canadian things. Um, and then we have a youth there. Um, and really, um, all, all the aspects are fairly oversized, except for the youth. And it kind of shows that um, for, for someone that's young, the world is a big place to live. And there's lots of opportunity. Have many people involved? Um, signed up to volunteer already on Thursday? Uh, we have a few youth groups actually uh, participating. So the Lloydminster Community Youth Centre, uh, the Native Friendship Centre's youth group, uh, Youth Council, and, and some others that are thinking about it. So the youth are, are our main goal, is to get the youth uh, participating in, in community. And then we have, we have a few adult volunteers too that are helping out. I noticed in the email that if you're lost, you can also look for the Home Depot tent or the home. Yes. Home. So is there going to, is there sponsorship for the event from businesses? The Home Depot is huge every year. I think it's been going on for about six years and they've been our sponsor for all the paint and supplies every year. And then this year, uh, the downtown and area redevelopment committee is sponsoring the pizza for the kids that we, we usually spoil them a little bit with pizza and pop after every event. And I saw in the email, there's gonna be other events planned in the upcoming months as well. Yes, so this is an all summer long project. It happens every two weeks on, on Thursdays. Um, and just because it, it does take a long time and we don't expect the youth to work for eight hours straight. So, so we, do, we do about an hour and a half. Um, every second week on Thursdays until the end of August. Do you have like a stencil of what the finished project will hopefully look like? 
I do. I want it to be a little bit of a surprise. Um, we have a couple community artists as well helping to sketch out uh, the mural. So the, they'll help sketch it out and the kids will help scrub off the graffiti and paint it in. So at the end, when it's all done, there'll be sort of a reveal of the project. People are welcome to stop by and check out the progress every two weeks because there'll be new, new things up and it'll be a work in progress all summer. How do you think these events over the last while and this one is impactful to the community? It's huge. Um, when you have an area that's uh, specifically tagged um, quite a bit, it's it's like a broken window effect, right? Um, if there's a warehouse with no broken windows, it's less likely to get graffiti or get a window smash. But if there's even one, then it, it happens over and over and over again, right? Um, so that's a big thing for people downtown or in any business. If you do get tagged, clean it up right away. Um, and then it, it just beautifies our community. It, it makes it a place of, of art and culture and, and it's welcoming. The youth who participate in these events, what do you think they learn from it? What do they take away? If you are going to be a contributor to the community, uh, it's huge to start young, right? Um, it, it builds confidence, it builds connectiveness, networking. Um, they they have a sense of pride and really they can 25 years from now it'll still be there and they can point and say hey I did that thank you again so much for joining me today Amber to talk about this event thank you so much for having me welcome back a professor at the University of Saskatchewan was invited out to do some research into an ancient, ancient civilization through some royal cattle teeth. With more, here's Thomas Wildman. Today we have Tina Greenfield, a professor of Near Eastern Archaeology with the University of Saskatchewan, and he, she is here today to talk to us about Mesotopian royal cattle and their, her study into them. And so thank you so much for being with us today, Tina. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas, for having me here. I'm uh, really excited to talk about this new research that I've been conducting. And so, Tina, kind of explain what exactly you, you guys discovered and what exactly you were finding out from these royal cattle, cattle teeth that you guys have discovered. To put it in a bit of context, um, I work in the Near East that is also known as the Middle East. And particularly right now, I'm investigating cities early cities in southern Iraq, modern day Iraq, also known as Mesopotamia. There's a very, very famous site there uh, that was excavated in the 1920s named Ur. In that they have this really incredible royal cemetery where the kings and queens have been buried, but also private um, elite individuals. And so, in 2014, I was asked by uh, the British Museum and the University of Pennsylvania to analyze the cattle from these royal graves. And so that started the journey of investigating the animal remains, because that's my specialty. I'm a zooarchaeologist, somebody, an archaeologist who studies animal remains. And I got information from the analysis, but wanted to take it further. And there are new ways, archaeological scientific advances, where we can look at teeth. We can look at animal teeth or human teeth and try and see what they ate and what they drank. And that gives us an idea of um, diet and how they were managed and um, how they moved across the landscape. And so I started doing these scientific techniques, stable isotope analyses, to try and see what the animal teeth were telling us. What early discoveries have you made in terms of these royal cattle's diets and how they were raised? And kind of what are what's different from how these cattle were raised in early times compared to how they're raised a little bit more right now? Well, it, it was really interesting because this is a time period where we also have early writing, cuneiform writing on clay tablets. And so we always thought that the animals that 
were provided to the kings and queens or royalty were different than the animals that the regular people ate. Um, and we found out actually there isn't this concept of a royal herd. Really, it is almost the same as what the regular people were eating. So much more um, like today, right? Where, where you can get very expensive foods or you can get very cheap foods. And, you know, this tells you a little bit about um, preferences to what you want to eat. And, and that was surprising because, as I said, in the text, they assumed that there was this royal herd um, that was only reserved for royalty and buried with royalty, when in fact that wasn't the case. And so because of that distinction that you've made that the royal cattle aren't really as royal as maybe you would have originally have thought, is it possible that these cattle just happened to be owned by the royal people or maybe weren't as royal as previously thought at all? It's difficult on some levels to answer that, but what we do know is that the cattle that were put into the royal graves, they, um, they were of prime age. They were killed and sacrificed in huge ceremonies for the funerals and hundreds and thousands of attendants and cattle and other animals were put into the tombs of the kings and queens. It's something we call conspicuous consumption. It would be paramount to somebody being buried in a gold coffin today. So wealthy that they could afford to actually um, kill these very expensive animals and put the entire animal into the tomb as grave goods. Whereas when we looked at the non-elite or the non-royal people, they had portions of cattle. And so it wasn't the same level of um, elite grave goods. Thank you so much for all the information, Tina, and we hope you have the best of time continuing the study. Thank you so much. Welcome back to this edition of Pet Project, everyone. I'm joined once again with Nicole from the Border Paws Animal Society. Nicole, how's everything going over there this week? It's going really, really good. That's good, that's good. And so obviously, we can see already you got a super cute friend to introduce us to this week. So I'll go ahead and just let you introduce us. So this is Frazier. We believe he's about eight years old. He's trying to give me kisses right now. Um, so he came in as a stray, uh, basically walked the streets of Loom Lake his whole life. Uh, so he would definitely need to be on an acreage. We believe he's a massive mix. Um, yeah, so he's about 18 years old, or I mean, sorry, eight years old. And uh, he just had a dental done. His teeth were in rough shape. So he's just recovering from his dental surgery. He would do good pretty much kids. I believe he would do good with cats, other dogs. But I was, he definitely needs an acreage in order to run. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I was going to say, he looks like such a sweet dog. He's been so nice the entire time we were chatting, you know, off camera. And just seems like a really lovely guy. And like you mentioned, those Mastiffs, they tend to, uh, they need a lot of space. So, like, obviously, if you live on a farm or an acreage, you got a lot of space for him to run around and play. That would be, you know, the perfect situation for a dog like him to just have all the room in the world to run around and burn off that energy. So, certainly. Certainly, if you're interested in meeting Frazier, stop in the Border Paws Animal Society. Let him know, you know, meet him, say hi, get to know him, possibly bring him home would be wonderful. Perfect. Well, moving on here. So last weekend, you guys had a nice little event at the uh, Society. You had a volunteer orientation, which I love to hear. Love to hear about people getting involved with the org. So how did that all go? You know, did everybody have a great time? So yeah, no, it went really good. We had a really decent turnout. Um, we now kind of switched up our volunteer program a little bit. So we have, you know, just a, one that's for animal enrichment and then one that's more for the cleaning and the feeding of the animals, which is a little bit of a harder work. And then we're also setting up a volunteer to help out with our event. So there's kind of a little bit of something for everybody if they'd like to get involved. 
Perfect. So obviously that orientation happened last weekend, but I know you guys are always looking for people to help out. So if that's something that interests you, if you want to help out, you know, with the animal enrichment, if you would help out cleaning or to get involved with the events, certainly, you know, get in touch with them and uh, let them know, you know, when you're available to help out because, you know, it's always appreciated. Perfect. So, um, and another one that we'll tease here coming up, although we don't have a lot of details, but you did mention that you guys have a cat adopt option event coming up. So I'll let you just kind of give a little tiny teaser for people, let them know what to keep an eye out for. So again, we are full with cats. So we are going to hopefully in the next couple of weeks set up a cat adoption event where we'll have some sort of discount going on. So if you're looking to add a feline friend, that would definitely be a good time to do it. Save a little bit of money as well. So you could put more money into spoiling your kitty. Perfect. There you go. So obviously, if you've been looking forward to this, but maybe you're like, mm, you know, I just want to save my dollars right now. This is a perfect opportunity for, you know, to get an adoption, save a couple of bucks. And, you know, like you said, you could put that forward to something else for the animal, you know, get the cat spayed, you know, get it some toys, whatever needs to be done. That is uh, certainly a great idea. Perfect. And one last thing before we go here, Nicole, I always like to ask, uh, you know, what are you guys looking for as far as physical item donations? go if anybody is out shopping and they you know something's on sale what is it that you're looking for this week so this week we definitely need some cleaner like some mr clean i believe it's pet friendly so we prefer the mr clean just because it's not toxic to animals um and then as well as blankets unfortunately we go through them like crazy with all the dogs so if anybody has some blankets laying around their house we could definitely use them Perfect. So, you know, if you're at the store, you're at Walmart, you're at Superstore, Mr. Clean's on sale, maybe pick up an extra jug for the Border Paws. And, uh, you know, you guys have asked for blankets before. I've mentioned this. Uh, you know, if you have some extra blankets lying around the house, perhaps you got a linen closet that's just, you know, full of, of extra blankets. You know, the dogs aren't choosy. They'll take your old Pokemon blankets. They'll love them. So definitely maybe take a peek. See uh, in your basement what you got hiding down in the uh, pantry down there. So unfortunately, that's all the time we have for now but I want to thank you Nicole for stopping by Frazier I want to thank you for saying hi being such a good dog there and behaving the whole time oh what a sweetie with that big smile all right well unfortunately like I said that's all the time we have but we will speak with you again next week pet project is sponsored by the pet pad for total pet care think pet pad Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. Well, Canada Day is coming up and many communities around Lloydminster will be celebrating, including the town of Unity. I'm joined right now by Azure McGonigal, who is the Vice President of the Unity and District Heritage Museum. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Stacey. Well, let's talk about what's happening. So much <laughs> is scheduled for uh, the museum on Canada Day. Uh, how does the day start out? What's the first thing on the agenda? First of all, we have our infamous pancake breakfast put on by our board members. And most years we have all of the food donated. So it is basically come down, eat as much as you want and uh, get a good start to the day. And is there a cost for the breakfast or are you collecting donations of any sort? The cost is $10 a plate. And we have decided for families who want to join us, we're minimizing the cost to $25 for the family. All right. And after the breakfast, then uh, the buildings open. What can people see if, if they haven't been to the museum and are from around this area, they're looking to maybe get out for Canada Day. Can you tell me what some of the displays are within the buildings? So we actually have a large number of buildings that we have here on site. We have everything from a rail car to <laughs> two old schools, uh, one room schools. And we have fashioned each of our buildings to almost look like what they would have back in their heyday. And you have some ceremonies scheduled so people can, you know, come out to have the pancakes, then they can have a look at the buildings, and then you have an official type of a ceremony. So what time does that start and what's planned for that? So our opening ceremony is set for noon, and that's where we invite our legionnaires to come and help raise the Canadian flag. 
to start off the July 1st. We also will be exhibiting um, our two new exhibits that we have created over the past couple of months. One of them is being the uh, Kill Winning number 73 Masonic Lodge. We had our Masonic Lodge just recently closed. They are going to be um, amalgamating with the Britannia and Lloydminster. So the Unity Lodge here members have actually donated the entire upstairs of the Adnac Hall set up as the Masonic Lodge to the museum for the time being. So we are very proud to have that. And after doing some research, we've actually discovered it is the oldest complete lodge um, in Saskatchewan donated to a museum. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a fabulous day and there will be concessions. So if people are looking to make a day of it, there's some options to get some snacks as well. And it looks like the fire department is helping out with a lot of, of different things. Tell me what they have on the go. We are so very fortunate to have such an amazing group of men with our volunteer fire department. Um, they have helped us out now for the past two years, not only with our Canada Day, but also with our family day in February. And we've had a few guys actually planning since February for July 1st. So they are going to be cutting open a grain bag and making a 20 by 80 foot slip and slide for the kids. They're also doing a foam pit as well as setting up their tether ball to shoot the water from the hoses with. And with their slip and slide, they're doing a fundraiser for themselves as well. They're allowing kids under the age of 12 to put in $2. And whoever slides the furthest on their 80 foot slip and slide gets the 50 50 jackpot. Well, and there's entertainment too. So, like I said at the beginning, this is such a full day. Uh, let's talk about the entertainment for the afternoon. So, yes, our entertainment this year, um, we were very, very fortunate to be able to find um, time to get Jake Badland and the Sturgeon River Boys. Now, Jake was part of the bluegrass duo, Jake and Ira from the Cut Knife area. So it is great that we are getting this award-winning band to come down and perform for us in our little neck of the woods. And I've already heard there's a buzz about them coming. So I'm hoping we have an amazing turnout for them. And a supper is planned for the evening. And it sounds like this is something where people uh, expect to have the, this, this chili. It's uh, an amazing, almost like award-winning type of a, a chili. Tell me about the plans for supper. So this is actually our second annual chili supper. Um, we used to always do a roast beef supper. And when the pandemic hit, we had to try and find a different way that we could still incorporate people to stay a little bit later, um, but do it a little bit more cost effective. So all of our board members and even some extra family members pitch in a pot of chili and we serve it up. And the chili is by donation. There is no set price. Well, it sounds like this is going to be a really great day. If people are looking for information where they can kind of get a concise list for times and that sort of thing, what is the best place to go to to look and, and get all the information for Canada Day? Our uh, Facebook page is probably the best place to look, Unity and District Heritage Museum. And um, we've got lots more planned than what I just briefly touched on. Um, we have so many different special guests. We have so many different new businesses coming in, but definitely our Facebook page is the plus, best place to keep up to date on all of the goings on. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. And it sounds like it's going to be a great event. Good luck with everything. Thank you very much. Well, that's it for our first hour of primetime local news. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay with us. Our second hour continues next.